Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hey, Calvary, thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. It is good to be continuing to look at some of the history of the nation of Israel, looking at their progression of kings. You know, we're in the, the book of 1 Samuel, and uh, earlier on in the book, we see the people make the decision to ask for a king. And uh, there's a lot that goes into that. You can go back a few episodes and kind of see some of the backstory of that. But they request a king. God uh, appoints Saul to be the king of Israel, the very first human king that they have to lead them. And it seems like all is great, and Saul does, has some early wins as a king, but, but very quickly we see that he was turning away from God's instruction, God's desire and commands for him as king and doing his own thing. And so early on we see that, that the Lord was not going to continue his rule and reign as king, but instead appoint a new king, that is David. And, and so now we find ourselves in kind of the interim between the fact that Saul is still king, but David is very clearly appointed to be the very next king. And it's the decline of Saul's kingship and the rise of David's kingship. And, and we see, unfortunately, that, that Saul is grabbing and holding and clawing on and desperate to maintain his rule and authority over the nation of Israel and obviously threatened by David to the point where he starts plotting to get rid of David, preferably by killing him. And, and when some early attempts didn't succeed, we see in 1 Samuel chapter 19 here today that Saul decides to take matters into his own hands. Uh, I'm going to pick up in verse 8 of 1 Samuel 19. It says this, And there's war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines, and struck them with a great blow so that they fled before him. So he, David, is continuing to be a victorious battle leader, a great military uh, ruler, and, and all of that probably is just driving the wedge in with Saul. As he's more and more bitter and frustrated about this guy named David. It says, A harmful spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with a spear in his hand. And David was there playing the lyre, a normal thing. David would play the harp, the lyre. He would be in Saul's presence. In verse 10, it says, And Saul sought to pin David to the wall with his spear, but he eluded Saul so that he struck the spear into the wall. And David fled and escaped into the night. David's just there minding his own business when the king of Israel decides to throw a spear in his direction. And luckily, he misses and Saul sent messengers to David's house to watch him, that he might kill him in the morning. But Michael, David's wife, told him, If you do not escape with your life tonight, tomorrow you will be killed. So Michael let David down through the window, and they fled and escaped. And Michael took an image and laid it on the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair at his head and covered it with clothes. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, I'm sorry, he's sick. And then Saul sent the messengers to see David, saying, Bring him to me in the bed that I may kill him. When the messengers came in, behold, the image was in the bed and the pillow of goat's hair at its head. This, is, this has gotten out of hand here. Dave, David is there as he normally would on a normal day, minding his own business, playing a musical instrument in the, the presence of the king. When he tries to kill him with a spear, that doesn't work. He flees and Saul tries to, to essentially kidnap him from his own home so he can bring him uh, to his presence to be killed, but David flees. And this unfortunately continues. There's a, a bit of a cat and mouse game that continues between the two as David continues to flee and try to evade and, and, and escape Saul's grasp while Saul continues to get more and more desperate in his attempts to kill him. And, and while we could talk about Saul, I actually want to pause and kind of flip the script a little bit. And talk a little bit about David and how he's responded here. Because David is in a place where he hasn't chosen to be the next king. God has elected him. He hasn't chosen to make an enemy of Saul. Saul has done that. He is in a place of relative innocence at this stage. And he's just doing what God is asking him to do. And Saul is continuing to be more and more rebellious to the heart of God to the point of wanting to kill David. But David doesn't strike back. In that, in that moment where he's playing the lyre and the spear comes, he doesn't grab the spear and go to war with Saul there. David is an accomplished warrior. He killed Goliath. He is killing Philistines. He's going to war. He could have done that. 
He's not some poor, helpless shepherd boy anymore. See, he chose not to. He didn't go back to his house and, and, and when he got word from his wife that he's going to get killed, he doesn't form a strategic advantage and set booby traps like home alone to kill all of Saul's men. No, he instead escapes quietly into the night to flee from the conflict. And I wonder, as we reflect on this ourselves, what would we do? And it's not really a hypothetical, so it's more like, what will we do when people throw spears at us? And those spears might be in the form of words and accusations and hateful comments and judgmental things they throw at us. It might be actions that hurt us physically, emotionally, relationally. It might be things they do to betray us and, 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 and cause harm and destruction in our life. What will we do when spears come our way? Will we pick them up and throw them back in the direction they came from and go to war and try and be victorious and, and, and bring vengeance and vindication into our life? Or will we be like David? And will we just walk away and allow God to fight our battles? Because see, this would continue. And David actually would have several attempts to take the life of Saul, and he would intentionally choose not to. Because over and over he, again, he said, that Saul was God's appointed king at that time. God had not removed him as king over Israel. So he said, who am I to kill the king that God has put in place here? He, he chose not to take vengeance and, and, and bring about justice for himself, but instead he trusted that God would do that for him, and he did. And God would continue to, to lower the authority and the rule of Saul while continuing to elevate David all because David let God fight his battles. He didn't try and take matters into his own hands. He didn't throw the spears back, but instead trusted that God would be his protector, his vindicator, his person to execute justice. So today, will you do that? When you're facing that, that situation with the person who's, who's warring against you and making your life difficult and causing all kinds of pain and destruction, will you throw that pain and destruction back or will you let God be the one to bring about justice? Because in the end, he will. And when we trust him to do that, our life will be blessed. So I hope today that you don't pick up the spears and throw them back. But instead, you just walk away and let God be your protector and defender. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.